and thanks for watching and if you're new to my channel then welcome my name is Claire I'm a freewheeling flutist and flute boxer from the UK I've been playing the flute and performing for over 25 years I also teach flute singing and music theory I've been creating content here on YouTube for a number of years from flute boxing arrangements and tutorials to covers of all sorts of music and I also live stream here on a weekly basis which I've been doing for around two years now with my Fluteful Time show. Um, there you can request your favourite tunes and enjoy some friendly chat and some fascinating facts along the way too. Today I'm reviewing this, it's the Ace Mic wireless microphone, D5 wireless microphone, especially for flutes. Um, this is not a microphone or a company that I was aware of before um, recently and full disclosure I was sent this microphone in exchange for an honest and open review. After trying it out, testing it a couple of times on my live streams, I'm ready to show you what I think. So first of all, let's have a look what's inside the box. The case itself comes with this cardboard sleeve which shows you a few of the different microphones that are available for different instruments and on the back it shows you the microphones themselves. When we remove the cardboard sleeve we have a really nice hard case with a carrying handle. Now compared to other microphones that I've used in the past, this is already a really a big bonus having a really sturdy hard case which you can carry around for gigs and not have any fear of the microphone being damaged. To get inside we then just need to open the zip. We can then see that we've got a zip compartment at the top for all the accessories and the instruction manual on the top and the microphone and the receiver itself. The instruction manual has what you would expect, instructions in various languages, um, an overview and a breakdown of the receiver and the microphone itself and a small troubleshooting guide. Um, I found that it wasn't really necessary to read the instructions fully as is the case with lots of them before getting this microphone up and running. So let's take a quick look at the microphone itself. It's housed in this lovely foam which keeps it really secure and there is a cutout for the microphone which is clearly universal for the different microphones available. I don't feel that this is a problem having the smaller microphone in this foam as, as you can see it seems really secure. So the microphone itself is very lightweight and there's a nice long gooseneck which is fully adjustable with a windshield protector over the actual mic itself. There's a transmission aerial on the end and the charging slot is on the bottom too. There's only one button on the front which is the power button and there's a charging light, a battery level indicator and an infrared receiver light which lights up during the setup process and we'll take a look at that later on. The back of the microphone is where it will rest on the barrel of the flute. There's a really nice piece of soft foam on the back with a really beautiful curve which fits very nicely on my flute and this will then be attached with Velcro and we'll have a look at that later on. Moving on to the receiver which sits again very nicely in the foam packaging keeping it nice and secure. This is also relatively light, a little bit heavier than the microphone itself. It's got two holes on the bottom, one for the charging cable and another for the antenna which can be attached to help the signal if you're working at a longer distance. It then has two lights on the bottom with a sliding switch, three buttons above and then a window and two more lights above which we'll talk about later on. The plug at the top is a 6.35mm mono jack which will fit most mixing desks or speakers, however there is also a smaller jack adapter which we'll look at in a moment. So moving on to the zip compartment at the top, there's a spare windshield for the microphone which is always really useful if that goes missing. There is the antenna which can be connected onto the receiver, however I've been using the microphone fine without it so I would suggest this is something that's really required um, using longer distances but we can um, test that out later on. 
There is a jack adapter which I mentioned earlier. So if you want to use um, a 3.5 jack, then you can do. This is a gold stereo jack, so it's a really nice quality. And then we have two pieces of Velcro, a shorter piece and a longer piece, which are going to be used to attach the microphone to the flute. And we'll look at those in a moment. And then finally, we have the charging cable, which is a single USB plug with two wires to connect both the microphone and the receiver at the same time. This makes it really easy to charge them together, either by plugging into a computer or using a plug adapter. As charging is the first thing you'll need to do before using the microphone, let's have a look at that now. So I've plugged the USB into a USB power tower that I have and I have the receiver in one of the wires and the microphone in the other. And as you can see, both the green charging lights are lit up on the microphone and the receiver, indicating that they are both, both charging. Um, when charging is fully complete, the both lights will switch off. Uh, I've found so far it's taking between an hour and two hours to fully charge from having used the microphone for around about two hours. Um, the instruction says that you will then have about six hours continuous use, which I think is fantastic really. Um, as I say, I've used it twice now for two hours continuously when I've been live streaming and I've had no problems with it whatsoever. So I think my uh, battery life and the charging um, of the microphone is absolutely brilliant. So now the microphone and the transmitter are fully charged, it's time to uh, get it going. So next job is to get the microphone uh, attached to the flute. So I've got the smaller piece of Velcro here. I found that that is far long enough for my flute. Um, I think if you were using a larger flute, say an alto or a bass flute, you could use the longer piece, but the smaller piece seems to work fine. So we take the microphone and there is a slot there for the Velcro, so very simply just feed it through. Um, and then I'm going to pick up my flute and as I said earlier the microphone fits really really nicely onto the barrel of the flute. Um, it's really nicely cushioned so I've got no worries about there being any scratches or anything. So um, popping it there onto the, the barrel and um, I've just been finding that if I take the velcro and have it at the shortest length there and then um, just wrap around the velcro just sticks really really nicely and and it seems really really secure um, you can move it around for um, wherever you'd like it positioned and and that's it it's ready to go at some point I might um, cut the velcro so there's not this extra piece there but for now I'm, I'm quite happy to just leave it there so in terms of positioning we've got the antenna on the bottom um, and I found that that just sits quite nicely there at the top of the flute, it doesn't cause me any problems when I'm playing. And then as we've said already, the gooseneck here can be um, adjusted and you'll see it's quite a nice distance from the lip plate. So there's no real problem with um, the being it being too close, but of course you could move this further away if you wanted. So I think the, the length of the gooseneck and, and positioning for that is, is really, really great. Um, and we'll talk about how that affects the sound later on. So here in front of me, I have my mixing desk, which I use for my live streams, and I've plugged the receiver into the second channel. If we push the power button, then you'll see that the window reveals a number six, or a number nine if you're looking at it upside down, and this indicates the channel that the microphone is operating on. This is because the microphone operates using an RF signal, and so this can be changed in case of any interference. I haven't actually had to do this. I found that the setting that it came on um, straight out of the box has been absolutely fine, but this is an easy thing to do if necessary, just using the buttons on the receiver. So once the receiver's plugged in and the microphone's on the flute, you're ready to go. So just push the power button on the microphone and you'll see that the red light appears on the microphone. There's also a green light now appeared on the receiver, which shows that you've got a good signal and you're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some clips from one of my live streams and I'm going to show you the same piece compared with another microphone that I've used before so you can hear the difference in the sound. I'll then play you an unaccompanied piece with the microphone so you can hear the quality on its own.
So there we go, I hope that's given you a good idea of the sound of the microphone compared to another. Um, I can also confirm that I've tried it at a distance of around four meters. So here I am having left the room testing that out and I can confirm that I can hear no change in the quality um, from being close to the receiver or further away, which is really excellent. So overall, really can't find fault with this microphone at all. I think it has many advantages. The biggest perhaps being the wireless function, which is really brilliant and has made a big difference to my live streaming. Um, I'm sure those who have watched my live streams before will attest to that when I've had problems with tangled wires and I've had to stop. So it's made such a difference to be completely wire free. Um, I also cannot fault the quality of the microphone, which I think is something that I hope you heard there. Um, I think the fact that the microphone itself is pointing towards the lip plate rather than um, down the flute is a massive advantage as it really reduces the key click noise which you sometimes get um, from microphones. I think the key clicks can still be heard slightly when you're playing unaccompanied if you're listening on headphones, um, but I really don't think that's a big problem at all. And for ease of, ease of use, I think that makes this microphone a really excellent purchase. And I'm looking forward to continuing to use it on my future live streams. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video really useful. If you have any comments or questions on the microphone, then do feel free to leave them below and I'll get back to you. And if you've enjoyed my content, then do subscribe to be notified of any future releases. Take care and I hope to hear from you very soon. Bye.